Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia and I am the Woolly Worker and this is episode 3 of the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. If you're a returning viewer, then thank you so much for coming back. It means a lot to me that you are enjoying the first couple episodes and special episodes. If you're a new viewer, then hello, welcome. I hope that you like the content that you're about to see. I also make other videos. I've just released part one and part two of my 2022 knits. And I've also made some like pattern roundup videos like sweaters or cardigans to make. I'll just quickly introduce myself. Like I said, I'm Venetia. I'm originally from Belgium, if you can tell from the accent. And I actually live in Scotland near Edinburgh with my partner. We've recently got new jobs and moved across the country. So it was a lot of new beginnings back in December, January. And I decided to launch this knitting channel in January as well, just because I was toying with the idea for a while and I thought it was a good time to, to, to try. And it's been going really well. And yeah, like I said, I, I'm just super happy to be filming today. There's so much to talk about. I filmed the last episode around three weeks ago and there's already quite a lot. So if you want, you can follow me on Ravelry or Instagram at the Woolly Worker. I post a lot of details on Ravelry with needle size, size of the garment, weight of the yarn used, comments on my thoughts on the pattern, dimensions of the finished items, blocked and unblocked. I try to stay on top of that, usually for my own benefit, but if you want to take a peek, you can. And on Instagram, I try and post uh, nice photos. I I'm trying to get better at taking photos. And I also post some stories and you can follow me along. So I'd love it if you could uh, follow me on Instagram. As always, I keep a very, very detailed description box on YouTube. So if you have any questions about anything I mentioned, if I forget to mention it or I forget to put it on screen, then definitely have a look at the description box. There are links, there are names, there are numbers for colors. So I hope that is useful to you. And this video is particularly exciting because as you can see in the title, there will be a giveaway, which is so, so, so fun. And I've been wanting to do this since we reached the threshold of a thousand subscribers, which happened really, really fast. I wasn't expecting it and I wasn't ready. Uh, and by now we are at a higher number of subscribers, obviously, but I hope that you can still participate in this giveaway. I decided to make it international. So all my US followers and obviously elsewhere in the world can participate, but Stay tuned for the end of the video for all the details and also check out the description box for the details for the giveaway. It's my first time organizing one, so bear with me while I do this. So this podcast is going to follow the usual kind of structure where I will talk about what I'm wearing and I will talk about my finished items and my works in progress, maybe some swatches or plans for like what's in the works. And then I will talk about a couple of acquisitions and then there will be the giveaway. So we do have a lot to get through. I hope that you've got yourself a drink or something to eat or snack on. I've got a little cafe latte and I hope that you are comfortable and that you've got some knitting. As always, if you want to tell me what you're knitting on in the comments, I love reading them. I've discovered a couple of new designers that way, so it's really nice to share and spread the um, nice patterns that are out there that we might not know. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode and let's just get right into it. First things first, what am I wearing? And you may recognize this or not. I showed it in my previous podcast episode as a work in progress. It was almost done. I just had the bottom ribbing to do. And this is sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This pattern was really enjoyable to do. I've seen a couple of versions, you know, that use mohair, but I was looking for a non-mohair version because I wanted to wear it next to skin and I didn't want it to be too pricey. Um, so I went on Instagram and looked at people and I saw someone using Double Sunday by Sandless Garn. And this is the color Night Blow. I'll put the number in the description box. And what I didn't read actually was that that person, when she used Double Sunday, she went down a needle size, which made for a tighter fabric and maybe she adjusted... Oh no, I think she got go gauge. Or maybe she adjusted the size and made like a size larger to account for that. I didn't read that. So I actually used the same needle size that the designer recommends, which I think was 4.5. It might not be, but read my Ravelry project if you want to know. And I feel like, yeah, you can maybe see my skin now. I guess I could have been wearing a dark t-shirt underneath, which I might 
in the future, but it's so comfy that it's nice to be wearing next to skin. Um, so in retrospect, I guess that I could have gone down the needle size and then made a size larger is what I would do. But I'm really happy with the finished project. I made the size extra small and also in retrospect, I feel like I could have gone for the size small. I'm usually in between sizes and I don't, I'm not a huge fan of, of very, very oversized projects that have like 25 centimeters ease. So I didn't want to end up with that. But then I did end up with quite a, a fitting garment, I guess. Like it's not that oversized, as you can see at the sleeves. They're not that big. And there's no decreases in the sleeve. So they're very nice and roomy all the way throughout. There's a big section of ribbing like that. Uh, I should demonstrate that the really nice thing about this sweater is this like shoulder detail, uh, which I'll show in b-roll if I haven't already or like other photos. It's really nice and quirky. I think her sweater number 11 might also have that but it's a different yarn and different gauge. It's got a nice uh, double folded neck which is quite nice and chunky. I could have made this longer but it's just like this right now. But I'll show you actually the yarn I ended up with is that that's all I have left. So I was playing yarn chicken until the end and I was quite worried. I guess with that I could have made maybe maybe one row of stockinette, maybe two before hitting the ribbing. I'm quite proud of, of having estimated right. But it was not nice because I used the amount of balls recommended by the pattern, but I could have made it a bit longer if I had gotten one extra ball. But I do like it like that. If I was to do this again, I might use a mohair or I might just do an extra small. I do like double Sunday for it. The thing with that is that it also grew quite a lot in the blocking process. I didn't pin it or anything. I just soaked it, dried it in towels and laid it flat on some like mats. And I was finding that it really grew, I guess, lengthwise and widthwise in the sleeves. But I really like the sleeves. Like they come here if I'm putting them all the way, but if I'm doing my hands like that, arms, it's nice, they're not getting in the way, they're not like too large that I feel like they're coming over. So I really like this jumper, I like the fit, I've worn it a couple times. Double Sunday is really nice, it's a merino, it's non-super wash, it's a bit drier than other merinos but like I said I'm wearing this next to skin and it feels amazing, it's really warm, like heat retention is good. I made my Marseille sweater in this yarn and I've also been enjoying wearing that one since finishing it. The yarn I might want to use later is Lemana Como Grande, which I think she recommends. I've seen one in slate grey, which looks amazing, or maybe one in black. I'm gonna say this in every video, by the way, is that I want to make a black sweater. So every time I'm making a sweater, I'm like, ooh, could I make a black version next? And let's face it, I probably won't because I've never, I don't think I've ever knitted the same garment twice yet, even though I, I really plan to, I'm going to do it at some point, but I just keep on getting interested with, with new projects. So anyway, that's it for sweater number 23, really happy with that. Uh, I guess something I could do in this video that people said they liked in my 2022 roundup is I can put the price here below of what this ended up costing and I've changed the way that I calculate things now. So instead of rounding up, for example, here I bought, I think nine balls of yarn and I used 8.5, let's say. Instead of saying the price of the nine balls, I'm going to say the exact price of the 8.5. So the prices are going to be extremely accurate to the gram. So I'll put the price of what this cost here and I'll do that for all the future items in this video if I remember. And if I don't say it, I'll definitely remember in the editing phase. So I'll put it down on the screen below. And then at the end of the podcast, I'll say the total cost of this month of knitting. Yay! I don't know, this could be interesting, but let me know if this is a bad idea or if you want me to keep doing that for the next project. I definitely intend to do some kind of statistics, financial video at the end of the year. So I'm keeping track of those numbers anyway, so I could put them here. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about finished objects. There are quite a few. I kept on having a basic plan or idea for this video and I had a certain amount of finished items and a certain amount of works in progress and swatches. And then things kept on going from one column to the other because they stopped being works in progress and then they started becoming uh, finished items and I thought oh my god I have to film now otherwise I'm gonna end up with 10 finished objects and nothing on the needles so I'll bring this up you've seen the swatch for this in the last podcast episode this is the weekend slipover v-neck uh, as you can see it's quite large so here it is in all its beauty I'll also show some b-roll and photos of me 
wearing it or just like it laying flat. So as you can see, it's like an oversized sleepover that comes over the shoulders like this. Like this. It has a nice uh, invisible shoulder pickup seam. I hope you can see here. You can't really tell where I picked up the stitches. On this side anyway, but then on this side, I think you can. It's less neat, and I think this is because I'm using a German twisted cast on, which leaves these like horizontal bumps. And I asked on my story if anyone had any ideas on what to do about that. People recommended that I pick up one row underneath, which would make a bulkier seam inside, but that if anything makes it a bit stronger and sturdier and would hide that seam uh, or that pearl bump row thing so I might try that next time I think the instructions for that one were not super clear like how she tells you to pick up the stitches but I used the Stockholm sleepover video that's on YouTube to do that because I think it's the same technique so that worked out quite well it took me four days to make this project I made the size extra small because I knew that if I made the size small it would be so oversized and as you may see in this one it already is really really big I'm not mad about it. I think that's the look that I was going for. That's the look that she markets. So I'm happy with this project. I don't really know yet what I'm going to be wearing it with and styling it with. I guess something with long sleeves. I've worn it over like a very big oversized like comfy jumper and I kind of liked it like for that added layer of warmth if you really don't want to put the heating on. But months are getting warmer now so maybe this will not get as much wear as it could, but we'll see. I just don't know. I used knitting for olive, double, no, heavy merino and soft silk mohair. It was my first time using knitting for olive. I really liked it. I love their color selection. It was really hard to pick colors, but I know it's not the last time I used those, uh, this brand. So I like the mohair. I think it's really soft. I think both yarns are really dry. I talked about this previously in the podcast when this was a swatch. This was worked on 5.5 millimeter needles. So quite large and a bit heavy on my hands. I found it was more painful to knit than like four millimeter needles. So I was kind of glad that it was a, a quick and short project. There's a part in the pattern where you have to do a tubular bind off and you're actually starting with a pearl. So I put info on my Ravelry on how to do that because I wasn't really sure. All the tutorials that you usually follow, they start with a knit pearl, knit pearl. So just in case you wanted to know how I did it, I, I put that in Ravelry. I also had to play yarn chicken with this one, which was not nice either. I have some leftover mohair, but I literally had nothing left of the merino. So I did everything to the length recommended in the pattern, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, I'll put it on Ravelry. But I ended up with just like one meter of merino. So no leftover at all, even though I bought the recommended yarn. But I guess, so even though yarn chicken is not nice while you're doing it, because then you're panicking about running out, it's nice at the end because now I don't have like a quarter of a ball of heavy merino. I do have leftover mohair, but that's always good for swatches. Like if you don't want to crack into a ball of the color you're going to use, but you have some leftover mohair of the same brand, you can use that for the swatch. Even though the swatch won't have the same color as the finished garment, at least you'll have the same texture and gauge. So yeah, it was an enjoyable project, not as enjoyable as other ones because of the big needles, but it was so rewarding because it was done so quickly. One tip as well is to do your tubular bind off quite uh, tightly so that the v-neck and the shoulders and everything cinch, I guess, correctly. Also, there's a um, double center decrease detail for the v-neck. And again, if you don't like the instructions that Petite Knit gives, this is about Petite Knit, by the way, um, there's always instructions from other designers or tutorials online. So if you don't quite like the way it's worded or you don't get it, then you can always learn the technique elsewhere. And I feel like now I got it. I got it under wraps, that technique for the v-neck decreases. So I can do that on, on most patterns if it comes up in the future. Nothing else to say about that. I guess here's the price of how much this costs in total. This is one of the most expensive yarn combinations I've used. But thankfully it was a slipover, so it didn't use too, too much yarn, as much as a sweater, complete sweater would, would use. So it was okay, it was affordable, I guess. So the next project is the Eclair Pullover by Beautiful Knitters. This is, I guess, 
quite an impulse project and you may have seen the yarn in one of my previous podcast episodes. This is what I have left. This is Isagur Eco Soft in the color 4S. And it's a blown yarn that has this cotton net and then alpaca fibers blown into it. It's really interesting. Here's what it looks like. Well, it's not really... Um, yeah. So this is what it looks like. So I found photos on Instagram of people wearing this and I loved it and it doesn't have that many projects on Ravelry or Instagram same as this jumper by the way sweater number 23 when you look on Ravelry there's not that many there's a few more on Instagram and usually I steer away from projects that don't have many projects especially on Ravelry because I even though I guess I'm an advanced or intermediate knitter I still sometimes feel like a beginner knitter at heart and I worry that I that if there's mistakes I wouldn't be able to spot them or if other people have recommendations then they're very well placed to put them and I should follow them. So I love it when a project has like thousands of projects and when you sort them on Ravelry by most helpful you can see what other people uh, have found helpful about other people's notes and then I just follow that to the T. Like if someone said for example for the balloon sweater that I'll show you in a bit someone said to make the sleeves longer then I'm like following that religiously and I'm gonna make the sleeves longer because someone else recommended it. And I probably wouldn't have thought of doing that myself. But I took a plunge for this one. There was no big pattern notes for the eclair sweater or for this jumper and it turned out really fine. So if you're seeing the patterns that you want to do but they don't have that many projects on Ravelry and you like the look of them, just do them and you know, just see what happens. So I'll show you the jumper. Here it is. The color is really difficult to catch because obviously like it has all these interesting uh, things interplaying. So it's got balloon sleeves and it's got a split hem. I'll show obviously b-roll and photos because this is hard to show. This is extremely soft and, and puffy and fluffy and very light as well. I guess the modification I made was I made a double folded color but in retrospect I don't know if that was a good idea. I made Wait, twisted rib is got twisted rib, which is in the pattern. I probably should put an elastic on the color so that it cinches in more. The raglan instructions for this, they have you put a marker like either before or after the raglan, which I'm not used to doing that. So I did a bit of math in my head and I placed a marker before and after the raglan stitch. But I think I must have done that a tiny bit wrong. And then at some point my body count or sleeve counts, stitch count was wrong, but only by like one stitch. And I decided it was fine. It's oversized anyway. I made the size one. Yeah, extra small. I used uh, five and a half skeins of yarn. So that's why I said I've got that left over. The best thing about this, I'll try and show this on video, but if I can't, I'll just show you in the B-roll. But you've got this split hem. Yeah, there we go. And you've got, this is the back hem and this is the front hem. And the front is kind of coming over the back and covering it instead of them, you know, just being like side by side, the front is over. I love that. It's quite cropped. I guess I did make the front a little bit longer because as you can see, the back ribbing is quite long and the front ribbing is shorter. So I made the front ribbing a bit longer. I've documented everything I've made differently on my Ravelry anyway. But yeah, I really like that. I think it's gonna be so, so fun in spring. It was really fast to make as well. Once I started, I just couldn't finish. I made it in seven days. So weak. I found it enjoyable even though the yarn was a little tricky to work with. It was quite catchy and toothy. It kept on just like, you know, sometimes you just have to pull to like detach it or something like because it attached onto itself or something. It would be difficult to find something that's similar in color. I've, I found this to be a very unique look. It's got a couple of other options like EcoSoft I think has six different color options. There's one that's like quite a light beige, sandy, light brown color and one that's a big dark brown like a teddy bear which would be really fun. Another yarn substitution I've seen someone use on Instagram was Isiger Alpaca 3 which is also either a blown or chaînette yarn which has the same effect and that one has more uh, a bigger range of colors but they're like flat colors instead of this like white and brown mix. So I probably would make this again maybe in Alpaca 3 just to see the difference or like in a light color. I've seen people substitute yarns with like completely different yarns and I don't think it looks as good or maybe just it looks very different. So if you want to get the same look, definitely don't stray away too far from that yarn. Otherwise you might be disappointed, especially like the um, twisted rib detail. 
the yarn here is really fuzzy so it fluffs it out and hides I guess the imperfections or the tension issues but if you don't have that fuzziness of yarn everything is just way more defined which I don't think works well with this pattern you want it to be fuzzy and blurry I didn't try this on until very late I was just winging it and going happily with it because it's oversized is very forgiving like the raglan I could tell that it was the kind of normal size of a yoke I've never seen that technique before that it has for the sl uh, split hem and the instructions I found for this pattern by the way were very short like I think the whole pattern is a page or two long and usually petite knit pattern which is what I'm used to are much longer and they go into more depth and they give you stitch counts along the way and I feel like this wouldn't be a good pattern for your first garment like at all especially like your first raglan and short row shaping and everything but if you've made sweaters before it should be fine so the, the pattern didn't give many instructions for everything except for that detail with the split hem and I thought that was quite smart actually because that one they did go into enough depth at some point you have to pick up stitches purl wise which it did not explain but I found another video online and I've kind of just made it up along the way and it didn't matter too too much because I think that gets hidden anyway but just so it doesn't catch you out there's picking up stitches purl wise in this pattern and it has two videos as well that I followed religiously like knitting on knitting with a video on the screen so I would make sure I was doing the right thing for that split hem and yeah I'm definitely gonna steal that instruction if I'm ever making a modification on another pattern that has a split hem you know just for me not for redistribution but I really want to try and recreate that split hem I just love it so so much I think it's so polished and professional and unique the yarn doesn't have much give because it's cotton and it's like that net so it didn't stretch out too much in the wash in the block and I think the pattern says to bind off in pattern for the ribbing of the hem and the sleeves but for the sleeves I tried to do the tubular bind off and I think that worked out well at first I wasn't sure it was going to work because of how little give the yarn has but it was fine so I'm quite happy with my tubular bind off it's one of my favorite things to do and it's just like the perfect finishing if you don't do tubular bind off please try and give it a go once you get it right you never go back and I'll put the price of how much this cost here below it was also an affordable project because it only used one strand of yarn so it's a great fit, I like it, it's a success. Oh, the next finished item is a very exciting one because I've mentioned that at the very end of part two of my 2022 roundup video of all the knits I've made in 2022, something I made in October last year was one singular sock, the Una sock, and it's from the book 52 Weeks of Sock. And I made this in West Yorkshire Spinner, signature four ply in the color Marshmallow, which is just a very bright, pure white. So that was the sock, I showed it off on camera and as I was showing it off on camera and looking at it I was just thinking, oh, this is such a shame, I really would like the second one because even though it's very, I'm finding it very boring to do this lace it gives like the best result I'll try and show some, some footage, it's got like eye of the part ridge heel flap which I love I think it's beautiful, this isn't blocked so it's like nice and open they fit really really nicely on my feet because um, it's two millimeter needles and I found that my socks usually are a bit too large so I'm definitely gonna try and do more socks on two millimeter needles I don't know if it's because of the lace as well that it's making it fitter or if that's the point is that if you make it on bigger needles the lace is not gonna work but I'm gonna try and do my next socks on two so anyway here's the second sock blocking I've made it when I was making the video I was saying oh please send good vibes help me finish the second sock and I did it I cast it on well I had it already cast on I was like halfway through the leg so I continued it like that very same day after filming I was like just do it just just finish it and it's got like little bubbles I made the leg shorter but I put the details on Ravelry and I was telling myself do one little bubble a day at least and then you'll be done in eight days and then what ended up happening was that I would make two bubbles a day or one time I just only made one but you know if you set yourself those little goals the worst that happens is that you meet your goal and then the best that happens is that you go beyond your goal so I'm really happy I'm excited to wear these they look so cute so elegant I don't know what shoes I'm gonna be wearing those with because they would probably 
stain and get dirty easily. Maybe I'll just wear them inside if I want to feel like the cutest girly ever. But yeah, it feels so good. When I finished it, I had like that morning of finishing it and I made the toe and everything. I just felt like that huge rush of euphoria and happy hormones of like, you know, finishing something. I think it's dopamine is the hormone that, you know, you get when you tick a box uh, of a checklist of something or finish a project. And I really, really felt that. I just felt like on such a high the whole day because that was a door I had opened back in October and I finally closed it, which was so rewarding. And I have a few more projects that are hibernating. And one of them actually, if I get a chance, I'll talk about in this video, but if not, I'll talk in the next, is also something that I started last year in autumn and I'm definitely gonna finish it soon, like pick it back up. And it's, it's a nice feeling to go back and pick up your hibernating whips. And also sometimes I guess you just have to cut your losses and, and just frog them or donate the yarn or something, which I will do with some of my hibernating whips. But yeah, let's talk about the works in progress now. So I guess while we're on socks, I can talk about that. So I finished another sock. Yay! And it's blocking right now. This is... um, What is this? This is just a vanilla sock pattern. I guess I'm just making it up. I just took a few... The few best parts of patterns that I liked, and I documented that. So the, the whole pattern for this is going to be on the Rivalry Notes, if you want to have a look. These are for my boyfriend. These are made in the West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 Ply. And I've shown these in, I think, my first podcast episode in Acquisitions. This is Juniper, and this is Mallard. And one sock used 25 grams of Mallard, so with one skein, I could make two pairs of socks with those, like, contrasts heel, cuff, toe, and he requested this, that was a long time ago that we got Mallard, and I got Juniper quite recently, I guess in, in December or January, and yeah, he really liked that colorway, I've made him a pair of mittens before, and he uses them a lot, which is nice, but I wanted to make him socks, he loves socks, he's got the biggest collection of colorful socks, and we're adding to this, he really likes stripes, the stripes are gorgeous, the yarn does all the work for you, I tried to calculate it so that um, I wouldn't have a, a blue stripe basically in the middle here and I wouldn't end on a blue stripe just so that the colors are even. I've counted all the rows so that I can make the second sock as identical as possible. What I'm worried with this is that it's going to be too large but I think it's okay. I had him try this on like when I was doing the leg to see if he could fit it over his heel and then I, tried, I had him try it on just before I started the toe to see how we were doing for that. And then after that, I'm not showing him anymore because I want to finish the second one and I want to gift them as a pair for Valentine's Day, which will be very cute. They were so, so fast to make. I've made, I guess, five, six pairs of socks now and basically all of them had something going on. The latest ones that I did, like in the podcast, was the um, library socks that I've shown before. Actually, they're right here. And, and also the West Yorker Spinner. And those ones had like a little pattern thing at the um, top here, which is uh, some ribbing rows. The pattern is free. So there was some ribbing to do and you had to keep track of that. Like, were you on a plain knitting row or were you on a ribbing row? And for this one, the vanilla sock, it's just stuck in it. And I was baffled at how fast this was working up because I just had to keep track of like, I just put a stitch marker when I was starting a section so that I could count that section, like count the rows, so I could make them symmetrical. But apart from that, there was nothing to keep track of. So I was just flying through it and it was just stocking it. I could feel I was knitting so fast. I knit English style with the wrapping. Um, and it's not the fastest in the world, but I guess I'm used to it and I'm okay. But this was even faster because I was just knitting, knitting, knitting. So I made it in 24 hours, this first sock, and I'm excited to make the second one. I'm going to try and avoid second sock syndrome, so I'm going to try and cast on the second one today and maybe get like halfway done and then finish it tomorrow. The only thing I would change is the ribbing. I made it one by one at his request, but maybe next time I'd do two by two because I like the look of that better or like two by one or maybe even twisted rib. Something I said before that I was struggling with socks was that I found the cuff too tight 
but what I could tell, it wasn't really the cuff, it was more like the cast on. And I used German twisted cast on, which is known to be stretchy and even stretchier than long tail. So I didn't know what was wrong. But for this one, I made really sure to do my German twisted cast on loosely. And that made a world of difference. I don't know what I was doing before that was like so tight. I was trying to get it as close to the needle as possible. But that one I was just making the loop go on the needle and then like just give it a little tug and then do the next one, etc. And now this is so, so, so perfect. So sometimes people even recommend to do your cuff on a smaller needle size so that the cuff doesn't slide down your leg. And I think I might do that because the cuff really wasn't tight. It was just a cast on. So now that I fixed my cast on, I can make the cuff tighter and I can make the leg on two millimeter needles. I think we're getting closer to finding my perfect vanilla sock recipe, which is one of my goals for this year. Obviously these numbers that are on my Ravelry page are for my partner's foot, but I'm gonna try and make up my perfect vanilla sock then for me, which will be pretty much exactly like that, but just a bit of different numbers. I still don't know if my sock would be better with um, two millimeter needles. This was made on 2.25. Or if I should make mine in 56 stitches instead of 64, and his are 64. So I don't know if I should go down the needle size or go down like eight stitches, or should I do both? Should I do a 56 stitch sock on two millimeter needles? Is that too crazy? I guess only experience and trying out, experimenting will tell. I've got a lot of sock yarn, so it doesn't bother me to experiment. I do want to try and use that yarn, which is relatively affordable. Like one kind cost like 850, I think. And like I said, you could make yourself four socks, two pairs of socks. So that's extremely reasonable and affordable. So I've got a lot of those bird colorways, which I'll try and experiment on because then I can find my perfect vanilla sock recipe and I can finally use all my fancy hand dyed skines. They're there on the corner. Because those ones cost, you know, like 18 pounds for a skine, so for a hank. So I wouldn't want them to be too large because I want, I want to love them. And I want them to fit like a glove or a sock. Okay, so it's been 35 minutes. I still have a few whips and then we've got a lot to talk about afterwards. So let's try and crack on with it. So the next thing you've already seen as a swatch, so I'll show it to you now. This is the Balloon Sweater by Petite Knit. The yarn I am using is Phil Colana. We've got Arweta in Marzipan and Snow White. Well, Tilia in Snow White. And that's an interesting project. It's definitely harder than her usual patterns. So it was nice to feel a bit challenged. So I'll show it to you first. So you've got the mock high neck like this. It's quite floppy. And as you can see, I've picked up for one sleeve. So we've got like those shoulders and a sleeve. And then this is like just a hole right now, but we'll pick up for the second sleeve. And as you can see, I've, I've joined in the round, obviously here under, and I'm just working down the body. But like I've said before, my technique when I'm making sweaters is once I join in the round for the body or split for sleeves, I just work down until I run out of yarn. And then I join new yarn at the sleeves. And I usually try and do a couple like I try and do sleeves before I finish the body just for motivation or like pick up for the neck. So you start off with a neck with a tubular bind on, which is a little tricky to master. It was my second time doing it, but I'm really proud because I, I found it easier this time. There's a video, which is on my Ravelry by Andrea Maori, which explains how to do it. And you have like some setup rounds, which help you not having to join in the round immediately after casting on, which is really hard because your stitches are super twisted. So you do a couple of setup rounds, which make your piece like flatter and thicker. And then you know for sure that you're not twisting in the round. Definitely, definitely recommend that. The effect it gives is amazing. She says to do the ribbing quite tightly, which I hope I did. I haven't tried this on yet. Then you have to do some raglan increases and short rows to shape like the top of the sweater. And I found that quite tricky. And also it's all done like flat, as in like short rows when you go back and forth. And I was doing this sweater because I was hoping to do something in the round after having done the eclair pullover I showed earlier. The bottom two sections, like the um, split hem. The split hem actually starts right at the underarm, by the way, of the eclair pullover. So there's no knitting in the round once you split for sleeves. So half of the sweater was made flat and I was getting bored of that. I wanted to make a, a jumper. So I cast this on 
and then what do you know you have to make it flat for like the whole top part and then the sleeves like a drop shoulder you have to do all of that flat as well so this took so long to do the beginning and it felt like a cardigan even though it was a jumper but then I joined in the round and then now I'm doing the sleeve so now it's all in the round stuff which is great but just so you know and this thing is gonna have a nice like shoulder detail as you can see like it's really nice I'm not usually happy with the way that I did my German short rows at the front I don't know if you're gonna be able to see I might show a video but oh yeah there we go so there's like the left and the right you know and I feel like this section is neater than this section I feel like there's quite a lot of holes even though I thought I was doing my uh, short rows correctly I apparently am not as good as I thought I was this may block out, this may not. It's okay. I'm really enjoying the fabric of this. I feel like it's so classy and elegant. And I know everyone makes fun of like beige and like sad beige and Instagram and stuff, but like it's such a nice color and I think it's gonna suit me. It's not like too white or anything. It's like a nice marled effect because it's like beige and white together and not a flat color. And yeah, apparently according to the pattern notes that other people have made they say that they're gonna make the body longer and the sleeves longer <clears throat> so that's also what I'm going to do I hope I don't run out of yarn but if I do this yarn is not too hard to get so I know that I can get some quickly and hopefully dye lots won't be too much of an issue I'm quite an optimist when it comes to that and I always underbuy rather than overbuy and it hasn't been too bad for me so yeah I'm happy that I powered through when I was doing all those all that flat knitting and I, you start with the back panel, then you do the front. I was halfway in the back and I got bored, so I joined for the front and started doing that. And then I was doing both at the same time because you're wanting them to be the same length. And it was so tedious. And I think I stopped doing that and then did the whole eclair sweater and then came back to the balloon sweater. Like I did a project as a palette cleanser while I was doing the balloon because I was so bored with the balloon. Or what was it that I did in the meantime? Yeah, anyway. But I'm happy I went back to it and in the end it didn't take that long to finally finish the front panels and to join in the round and now it's really just knitting in the round on 4mm needles and I found a couple of aspects tricky but I put that in the Ravelry I feel like I'm referring to my Ravelry quite a lot in this video but I hope it's not annoying for you and that you don't mind going to check it out because this is why I wanted to film today because I feel like I'm going to forget everything about all those projects as I'm making more and more but I kept some notes on my little journal here as I was making the project instead of just of just here before the video before filming so I feel like this has helped me tell you the information that I wanted to get across I said before there were some lovely color combinations I feel like this pattern looks great on light colored yarns I don't know if I would make it again I feel like just that beige one covers it. I don't really know what other color I would want to make it in. I said before maybe like a baby duck egg blue or something, but I don't quite know actually. I think and there's already another project I'm gonna make with balloon sleeves that isn't light blue, so maybe not because I don't want my wardrobe to be like too too similar. So okay, I think that's all there is to say about that. The next work in progress is the lentil sweater yay and if you've been anywhere on youtube or instagram you know what's going on these days it's the lentil knit along let's lento made by uh rebecca clo and amy palco they're both in edinburgh and i'm like 20 minutes from edinburgh so you know scotland pride uh, the pattern is from lane magazine joanna something which i'll put on screen obviously and it's a really classic pattern like wardrobe staple that everyone could make one and it would suit their wardrobe it's made with large needles i think the original calls for maybe six millimeter or 5.5 i'm making mine on 5.5 and it uses a fingering and a mohair which usually gets you like usually you use that on like four millimeter needles like the balloon sweater so the gauge is very light and airy which means that you don't need to use much yarn for it for example you could maybe buy two hanks of like hand dyed fingering weight yarn and that could make you a lentil which is so attractive as an option I've got plans if I'm making a second one to definitely go and buy some nice hand dyed yarns from my from my favorite dyers there's Zakami that I love there's also Dystopic Fibers which is another Scottish based indie dyer 
because the candy is also like in Edinburgh. And then there's another one that I like actually, I'll give them a little shout out. It's Giddy Yarns. I found them on Instagram and something that I absolutely love was that they had a collection on Stephen King books. I don't know if they still have them in stock, but I was, I love Stephen King. He's my favorite author, like so, 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 so loving his books. And I think even just now talking about it, I really wish I had bought some of the hand-dyed yarn that she made in um, tribute to some of his books and made a lento. Oh my God, I'm going to do that. Oh my God. Yes, yes, that's going to happen. <laughs> Sorry, wallet. I got inspired while filming. Anyway, the lento. So I'll show you, I'll show you my swatch actually, because I don't think I've done that before. On Instagram, it's been really popular when I post about this. So I'm, I'm happy that other people are liking it. Uh, by the way, I talked about this in my 10 sweaters I want to make this year. At the very end of the video, I said I was going to participate and here I am participating. It was one of my goals this year in knitting to participate in the knit along. So here's the yarn I am using. We've got Drops Alpaca in uh, hazel, no, in chocolate. And then we've got Drops Alpaca Silk, brushed alpaca silk in gray. And I'll put the numbers and colors below and also on Ravelry. And this is crazy, isn't it? What is that yarn combination? I wanted to use brushed alpaca for sure because I wanted to try it out, especially the drop swarm because it's so affordable. So if it's an option for me, then sign me up. And I had seen someone do a no frill sweater by Petite Knit using this kind of combination. I think they had used like a red and a blue or something, which looked so visually interesting and cool. So I swatched with that. And here's what I got. And it looks more orange on camera. In real life, I feel like you see the gray a bit too much. I think this was done on my six millimeter needles and I didn't meet gauge. So the final one I'm making is in five. Um, this is kind of blowing out and brighter, but you know. Yeah, I, I really wasn't sure. I 50% loved it and 50% hated it. It was so funny. It was very controversial in my head, but people seem to like it. It's not controversial on Instagram. And I thought, just go for it because the yarn is super cheap. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? But compared to my other Knitting for Olive projects and such, it's cheap. And the Lento is going to be really fast and on big needles. And it's not even something that like I was loving anyway, like the pattern. Like It's nothing special, I think. So I wasn't going to be dedicating too much time and effort. And I've made some mistakes already and I'm just going with it. Like It's just a, a trying out, experimenting project, which that's why I'm making it. And... I thought, even if you're not sure about the color, just do it. If it had been another project, maybe I wouldn't have gone for it because I was hesitating, but that one, I just went for it. And I love it because I thought once I'm making more fabric with this, instead of just this little square, I might change my mind and I might actually like it. So I'll get this out. So here's my lento now. I'm almost at the point where I'm splitting the yoke. What do you think? What do you think? Do you watch crazy, like, simply neological? She was, does that ring a bell to anyone else? Anyway, I love it. I'm loving this way much more now. So that pattern also has instructions to like put your stitch marker before or after your raglan stitch. But I've put stitch markers like before and after. And again, I got the math wrong somewhere. So my sleeves are one stitch short, but that's fine. I was thinking of maybe modding the pattern to make my sleeves balloony, but I might not. I might make a split hem. I might try to recreate that eclair pullover split hem detail I was telling you about that the front is like overlapping with the back instead of them both starting side by side. I was wanting to add a pearl row at a double folded color, but I forgot, so I didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, basically I was just I'm, I'm really seeing this pattern as like my exper my experimenting project and if there's any modifications I want to do I'm just thinking let's just go for it so at the end it's not even gonna look like a lento but whatever I think I probably yeah like I said I will make another one and maybe I'll make that one more like the pattern but I'm just just taking this as like my science project is anyone is anyone here participating in the lento what do you think what colors are you using are you making any modifications I do find that it's going quite fast uh, what I am doing though is like, this is my TV knit because it was just like in the round and like raglan and then it's going to be really simple like stock knit. Although if I end up making a modification for the body or the sleeves, it might not just be as simple. 
but yeah I was basically not working on this every day and just like when I'm on the tv with my uh, boyfriend and I've not been dedicating too much time to it but it's kind of like almost being worked like behind my back like it, it feels like it's building up without me having to put work in it because I do a little bit here uh, now and then okay so the next project is so funny because that's what initially was going to be just a swatch to, for me to show you today but now it's a work in progress so if you've followed me for a bit you know that my one true love is alpaca I love alpaca and this is a little swatch I made this is for the tourney slipover by the knit pearl girl Sophie I think I yeah this yarn came up in one of my previous videos as an acquisition from SKD Yarn. I'll put the link below. They're a very affordable way to get scentless garn. This is scentless garn alpaca in the color grayish. I'll put the thing below. And as you can see, it's got a nice little like pattern, like it's a structural knit that has textures as opposed to a stockinette or like color work. And it's like knits and pearls basically. It's a really simple repetition that even though like that's the whole repetition, it's like 20, uh, 20 rows or something. It does get memorized really quickly so you don't have to look at the charts too much. Sophie went above and beyond and actually charted every size. So you just have to download your size and then you just follow the chart. There's no like messing about or like having to visually like only look at one side of the chart but not the other or like doing math. Like it's all laid out for you. So here is what I've got so far. I've just drawn in the round for the body. So, yeah, so alpaca is a very growing fiber, it will stretch out and also the stitch pattern, because it has ribbing, it will also stretch out a lot. I can't remember what needle size I made the swatch in, but I went down one needle size for the final pattern. This is blocked, by the way. Before it was blocked, it was like genuinely half the size or like two thirds. So it's very, very important that you swatch. The recommended yarn was We Are Knitters. Alpaca something, but I didn't want to use that brand, so I used scentless garn. Someone had said that they held, I think Drops Alpaca held double. This is a DK weight. So scentless garn, I bought five kinds of it, so again, it's going to be an affordable knit, I think. And if I'm, I'm going to try and hold it here, if I hold it and stretch it, <laughs> yeah, you can see it's going to stretch a lot. I'm making size B, I think, the second one. Uh, picking up for the shoulders, again, you're using that same technique that I showed in the weekend slipover where like it's meant to be kind of invisible here in that stockinette section. Although there are some German short rows and I think that this yarn was not very forgiving for my short rows, so they're not the neatest, but it's fine. It's going to be at the back of my shoulders anyway. I will very soon pick up and do the armholes and the neck. As I said before, that's usually how I like to do things. I'm just going to try and finish that ball of yarn. Uh, for the body. Sophie even recommends like the amount of little like ribbing sections that she did for her length so I might go off with that because the pattern tells you to stop when it does a certain amount of centimeters but I'm not sure if that's if she means those centimeters like as is or those centimeters once it would be blocked and you use your swatch to calculate that I hope that makes sense so I probably will just like do the same amount of ribbing that she did didn't make any modifications, pattern is perfect as it is. It's been a really simple, enjoyable knit. You do like parts of it flat and then parts of it in the round. There's not that many pearl rows or pearl rounds. Like I, I would say it's mostly knits, then a bit of ribbing and then a bit of purling, so it, it's fine. And I found this very addictive actually because you just keep on wanting to reach the next section. And I really love it when, when my knits are like that and you just can't wait to to, to make progress on it and then progress is really fast. Okay, so that's it for all my works in progress, but I've got um, a couple plans, which I'm so, so, so excited to tell you about. And I was so happy when I heard the news. So one of the other knitting goals I had this year was to do some test knitting. I've been applying for test knits for like a few months and I was never successful, which is a shame, but I was usually applying for like big popular designers. So it's not that big a surprise. I don't really know how else people hear about test knits, but usually it's because a big, a big designer I follow posts a test call or because Instagram is like pushing me this popular post that I'm not even following them, but like the designer has thousands and thousands of followers. So that's why the post reaches me on Instagram. But then by default, that means that they already have thousands of like 
followers and applicants. So anyway, I was never successful. And then I started this YouTube channel, started posting my nets on Instagram instead of just Ravelry. And then I applied for a test net and then I got it. And I was so surprised, but also kind of like, oh, okay, so all I had to do was getting more active in the knitting community. And then like it pays off, I guess, in, in that sense. Um, so the test net is for Hyris Makes. She's based in Cambridge, I think, and she's got lots of lovely patterns. One of them is like a sundial kind of thing, which is really, really nice. This test is for a cabled vest and it's going to be released. I think the deadline for the test is in July. I don't know when it's going to be released, but that's so far away. So that's also why it was a very attractive test knit to apply for, because I didn't want to be too stressed and rushed by deadlines. And it's a cabled vest. So I said before, one of my plans was to make the Lana vest by Irene Lean, and I have the yarn for that. And it's also a cabled vest. So I'm going to put that plan uh, on the back burner for now, because now I'm going to just do the, the, knitted, the cabled vest for Hyris. The sample she made uses raw work wool. And at first I really wanted to use that wool as well, but there's only one shop that sells it in the UK, I think online. And they didn't have the color I wanted in stock. They only had one color in stock, to be honest. And I could have gotten it, but I wanted to really love this project, especially because it was going to be a bit pricey. This is woolen spun wool, which I've not used before. So I tried to make a yarn substitution. I felt very scared of doing that because I'm usually not the best at yarn substitutions, especially if there's no previous projects from other Ravelers and Instagrammers that I can just like use what they did. So this one I had to come up with myself. I used this website. I'll put it below. It's like yarn sub or whatever and they tell you how well a yarn is a match with another yarn based on content, gauge, fibers, color options, etc. So it's really useful. And I think this is how I discovered that I could use maybe this yarn. So this is the Fiber Co Lore, and this is the colorway Fair. And look at how big that bad boy is. It's like as big as my head. So this is it uh, in the hank, which looks lovely, and this is it, oh, sorry, uh, as a cake. And the color here is pretty accurate, I'd say it's like a greyish blue, or a bluish grey, which I am so into at the moment. I think blues and greys, oh, they're just filling that spot for me. And the pattern has instructions on how to make a swatch, which it's so good when a pattern does that because then you don't have to think about it. And I tried doing the swatch a couple times and it was not working. I've never finished a project with cables before. I've started one, the, the honeycomb iron or something. It's a free pattern. You can see it on my Ravelry as a hibernating whip. I don't think I'm ever going to finish it, to be honest. But anyway, I know how to do cables, but I've never really, like, I don't do them. And yeah, my swatch was not looking right. And in the end, I had to figure it out because I'm test knitting, so I just had to push through. When I figured out what was wrong, I'll tell you about it like maybe later. But I was really proud of having figured it out and sticking it through. So it's blocking now, I finished the swatch yesterday, and this is what it looks like. Ooh. Yeah, so we've got that nice like crisscrossing cable, like kind of a like double twist and something else here. I really like it. I think I like the texture. The swatch is like a bit like has grown a bit with the wash, which I think it's a good thing because I, I wasn't meeting gauge before. Yeah, I don't think there's that much else to say. I'm just super excited to have been chosen for a test knit. We're in an Instagram group chat, which has been very nice and helpful for choosing colors and stuff. The original color wasn't like a sound color and Hybris recommends using not a dark color. Otherwise, you're going to lose your cables. And I'm happy with my medium shade. I think it's a nice a compromise because I don't want all my vests and stuff to be like white or beige or light colored. I like to have some like tonal differences between them. And I'm not going to say too too much now, but I've just yesterday been picked for a second test knit from another designer. And I'm so, so, so excited because I love that designer. I love her patterns. I love her yarns. Hint, hint. So I'll be buying some yarn soon to make that test knit, which has a, a sooner deadline actually. So I'll be showing you that knit before then. I just have to pick a yarn and color and stick with it and commit to it, which it's always like my, it's, it's my least favorite part of projects is like committing to a yarn color, but I've never really 
I don't think I've ever regretted a color of something that I've made. So I guess all that thinking is worth, worth it. Okay, so I think that's it for the plan. So we've got those two test nets in the works. The next section is acquisition. So if that's not your cup of tea, you can skip ahead to the giveaway, hopefully, or leave the video altogether, but please stay for the giveaway. So the acquisitions, I have, I ordered some yarn on the 31st of December. My voice is going. It's been an hour since I've been speaking. So the yarn I ordered is from Zakami on the 31st of December and it was a diet to order, like it was a pre-order. It was my first time doing that and it was my first time ordering from Zakami because before I would just buy it at my local yarn shop in Edinburgh, the Inspired Fibers. They have an amazing selection of commercial yarns and Scandi yarns and hand dyed yarns. So what I bought was supposed to be like the Woodland Wonders collection and I spoke about that in the 10 sweaters I want to make. I bought this yarn to make the Monday sweater by Petite Net. So this is a brushed baby Surrey alpaca and silk mix. And I'm gonna be holding that with a strand of fingering. I'm now thinking that maybe I'd want the fingering to be like wool and cashmere or wool and silk or something, just to make it like super luxurious. I'm gonna just splurge and make that Monday sweater like my best sweater ever. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, this is the photo of the yarn I ordered, the colorway Brumation, and it was gonna be very like beige, muted, taupe colors, browns, I don't know, that's the image I had in my head. And then this is what I received. And I love it, like I really, really like how it looks. It's so nice seeing them all like together like that, but isn't that like much greener and oranger. This is pretty much what it looks like in real life as well. It's not getting blown up. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I guess, but I, I knew that. I knew not to expect like too, I knew not to expect like a certain thing and to keep my mind open because of like hand dyeing, obviously, especially hand dyeing, I guess, like mohair fibers, the swatch that they showed, and that's kind I showed you, is on the fingering base and not the, the um, Surrey Alpaca base, so maybe that's also why, but I think it'll be fine. I think that green, like pistachio sage green, will be really nice because it's something I've been wanting to try. It's got beige, it's got browns, I might have to alternate skines to avoid like variations between them. By the way, I really need your help for this. Can you tell me what I should hold this with? I have no idea. I guess a white or marzipan would be um, safe, but do you think I should hold like a darker base underneath or like the green as a base or something? What do you think would go well with that? Let me know. But yeah, I'm super, super happy with, with it. I can't wait to buy more hand-dyed things from Zakami, for example, like making that lentil sweater the Love Note sweater is another pattern that's been recommended for um, using not too much yarn. But yeah, I think hand-dyed yarns are, are such an interesting concept because like visually, aesthetically, as hanks or balls of yarn, I love it so much. But then wearing them, I don't know that I would, but this will be an interesting thing to do and see if I like it as much when it's knitted up uh, compared to caked up. Next acquisition uh, was a gift from my lovely, lovely boyfriend. We recently celebrated our anniversary. We went for a little day out in Edinburgh and this amazing guy got me yarn for the anniversary, which, you know, like what else do you want? What I usually do is I keep like yarn in baskets and stuff because that's how I plan my projects. And I kind of showed him what my basket looked like. You know, it's like almost like a wish list kind of thing. And he went ahead and picked some things from my list and he didn't know what the projects were going to be for, but he got me this sweater quantity of Knitting for Olive in the colorway Claret, inspired by Caroline's Knits. So I'll get two of them for, for you. This yarn has been earmarked and was already in the talks in the 10 sweaters I want to make video for a fern sweater. So this is it now. It's a little darker in real life, but yeah, it's just like the perfect like wine color dark red. I think it's going to go really well with my complexion. I think this is going to be really, really nice. And it's going to be nice to be using the silk mohair with the merino. 
this is like the like just single merino and soft silk mohair. Uh, I got five of each, so it'll be enough to make just basically any sweater in case I don't go for a fern sweater. I wanted to swatch and show you the swatch, but apparently there's no instructions on how to make the swatch. There's instructions on how to make like that fern lace pattern. I'll pop a picture of the, the pattern so you can see what I'm talking about. But there's but that's like including the like increases, you know, when you're doing the yolk. But there's no instructions on how to make the swatch. And I was speaking to Caroline on, on like how to do it and she just didn't swatch and made the sweater and then afterwards measured like the yolk to see if she was on gauge. And other people on Ravelry, I've looked at the photos and they've included photos of a swatch, so maybe there is a way of doing it. But I'm kind of erring towards the side of like just going for it. It's tricky because it's not as simple. Like if even gauge swatching is gonna be a trouble, then I'm worried about the rest of the sweater. And then some people have commented on um, gauge and, and needle size and like the fabric. You can either use like four milliliter or 4.5. And I think people say that the 4.5 is like preferable because it's like airy and, and light, but some prefer the four. I think I prefer the four to get like a denser fabric. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but initially what I maybe wanted to do like a week ago was using that red yarn and make myself the fern sweater and then wearing it on our date for Valentine's Day. And I thought it'd be a really cute way of saying like, look, I'm using the gift you gave me. But I thought it would stress me out to have that short a deadline, especially if the project was going to be maybe like requiring more thoughts. Like if I couldn't figure out the gauge thing, then no, I lost too many days thinking about that. So I'm not gonna make that for Valentine's Day, but that's fine. So I also got a few things on the wool warehouse. I'll really quickly uh, walk through them because I want to hold myself accountable. If you've noticed in this video, I've shown a few things that like had already made an appearance either as yarn or whips. I really wanna keep that thread of continuity where if I'm showing yarn, I'm gonna use it. So that's why I'm really happy to be using that like alpaca yarn for the um, tyranny sleepover, the eco soft for the eclair pullover, and the lento that I mentioned in the video. Like I really want that continuity. The lento yarn, by the way, was bought was bought on Wool Warehouse, and I bought some more brushed alpaca in that rust color. And it's funny because actually, like that and that would have been a really good match to to make like a rusty kind of sweater but I got the gray for the lento. And then this orange rust, it's looking quite red, but like it's more orange brown in real life. Yeah, definitely not red in real life. This is gonna be a canola's blouse from Petite Knit, but that's gonna be like in spring for sure. I just got it because I was getting stuff from Wool Warehouse and they have free delivery for expensive orders. Well, over 25 pounds. Because the original uses mohair, I think two strands of mohair together, and I know I'll never be able to handle that on my body. So I thought brushed alpaca could be a good contender. And this is pretty much recreating the color of the sample that she has. So I'll be excited to be trying those rust things. I've talked about this before. I'm trying to kind of find the colors that suit me. I know that blues and grays are safe and that's what I usually gravitate towards. But I'm excited to try more of those like autumn red mustard rust colors just to see. I guess I'll always stay away from like orange and yellow because of my blonde hair. I read somewhere that like it's not your complementary color. But you know, rules are meant to be broken and maybe I do suit orange and yellow, but like not as orange and yellow, but as rust and mustard as we call them. And then the other yarn I got is this. So this is The Croft by West Yorkshire Spinner. This is the Shetland colorway. This is uh, in gray. Colorway Nova. No, Kova. 450. And I got four of these. And this is going to be a cardigan from Ozetta. It's going to be the field day cardigan. And I talked about that in my 10 cardigans I want to make. I don't know if I've released that video yet or if it's like still in editing. So yeah, I will talk about this a bit more when I'm talking about the cardigan in that video. But I think I'm going to be winding this into a cake today and swatch for it because I really, really want to make a cardigan. Like that's the next big project I want to make. I've, I've just churned out a lot of vests and sweaters and I think a cardigan is definitely needed. And I'm excited to be making a cardigan without any mohair because I think it'll be more comfy. Okay, so I think that's all for acquisitions and projects and everything. I'm really happy. There was a lot to talk about, but I'm happy I'm filming today because Otherwise, it'll just be unmanageable. I hope that you found all of that interesting and that maybe you got inspired for your own projects. But now there's one more thing to talk about, and that is the 
giveaway. So initially, what I thought I was going to do for the 1000 subscriber was I would go into my local yarn shop in Edinburgh and get you a nice hand dyed kind of yarn or maybe something from like Isagur or like something that is a bit harder for people to find and package it up nicely and offer it to someone from the UK because I couldn't post elsewhere. But YouTube tells me that a lot of you are from the US and then I had some like good ideas in the comments, people were really helpful, there was a bit of back and forth with ideas and what to do to celebrate this nice milestone and in the end I'm gonna gift a pattern to someone so that way I can just offer it to anyone, anywhere. There's an option to do that on Ravelry where you can gift someone a pattern and then there's also the option of like me buying the pattern and then um, emailing it to you and then deleting it from my files or something um, in the spirit of like not sharing digital files. I thought it would be a good idea. Uh, the only thing you have to do then to enter this giveaway is subscribe to my channel and like this video and then comment. There's not anything you have to say in the comment, just any comment will be entered in the giveaway. If you don't want your comment to be entered, I guess just like comment what you want to say and then put a little bracket and say, I'm not participating, I'm not participating in the giveaway. But you know, just, just participate because I'll just send you a pattern. I guess the only caveat will be uh, no pattern above £10 or $10. Like I'm not going to gift you a book of patterns, but I'll gift you any garment pattern or, or anything you wish. Could be crochet as well if you wanted. And it's just my way of saying thank you to everyone for like the overwhelming and surprising amount of engagement and love that you guys have been giving to those videos. It really, really makes my day. Every time I get a comment, I just immediately go and check it out. I try and reply to all the comments as well. And people commenting on like my color choices or things that suit me, it just makes my heart so happy. You guys have been really good as well at giving me feedback on like the length of video or the setup or you know all those kind of technical questions because I'm just starting out and I want this to be a pleasant experience for you watching and you've been telling me like what I'm doing well and, and like it's really encouraging to keep going. I as you can probably tell like love filming because it's you've made it really enjoyable for me to have this YouTube channel. So I really wish that I could give a pattern to all of you, but I can't. But there will be more milestones to reach. I really, really want one day to offer some yarn to someone. So if you want to contribute to that and me reaching milestones, then maybe share, share the word. You can maybe tell your knitting friends about this channel or you can share it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. It would mean a lot to me if you kind of helped building this little community. So yeah, again, thank you so much for, for watching those videos. Like I said, just like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment and then you'll be entered in the giveaway. What I will do is I will let this giveaway be open for two weeks. So I think I'm posting this video on the Monday 6th of February. So I'll leave it open for two weeks. So on the 20th of February, I will use a random comment generator to select the winner and I will announce it in like the 20th of February video. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but apparently sometimes there's like people pretending to be YouTubers that go and message people saying, oh, you've won the giveaway, give me your address or whatever. I will not do that. I will not get in touch with you. I will announce the winner in the video and then you have to get in touch with me, which people say is like the best way of keeping everybody safe and, and making sure there's no scams. We don't want that. So I will announce the winner on that day and then you will have to get in touch with me. And if you're not getting in touch, I'll try and get in touch with you somehow. We'll see. Hopefully it turns out really well and there's no problems. But like I said, it's my first time organizing a giveaway, so please be patient and I hope everything works out. But I'm super excited. Okay, so that's all there was to say. This is going to be my longest video so far. It's been an hour and 15 minutes of filming. I might edit this down a little bit so it's more digestible, but people have said that they don't mind like if the videos were a bit longer, they can always pause and come back to it later. If you're still watching this, then yay! I hope that you participate in the giveaway. I hope that you like this video. And if you want to help me out to pick a color to hold with that Zakami yarn, like I said, I'd really appreciate some advice. I'm gonna swatch with like marzipan, probably. But I don't have any green or orange, like yellow yarn to swatch with. So I don't know what this is gonna look like. But yeah, I hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world. I hope that you made some progress on your knitting and I'll see you again for the next video that I'm looking forward to film. 
yeah, have a really good rest of your day. Bye, everyone.